So the first thing is milk and carting. Second thing is look at the cows themselves, cows that were high last year and how high again this year after antibiotic therapy in the dry period should be culled. They should be taken out now, reduce the infection rate, manage, manage the bell tank to the back end of the year and they should be culled out of the system. Eight weeks is your target to dry and depending, condition score will dictate a lot. Are they carrying twins or not? Condition score cell count, but the, the first two condition score and whether they're carrying twins or not are the biggest thing really. But eight weeks is your target. Make sure they have recorded their clinical cases of mastitis and they have identified the cows that have had clinical cases and the quarters that are there. I suppose the second thing to remember is herds like this have a, a high percentage of non-infected cows. The first thing, which is the obvious one, but a lot of people make this mistake, it must be milk recording. The second thing is, when is that milk recording? Ideally within 30 days, of, of drawing off of those cows, so there's no deviation, so that I have as accurate information as it can come to drawing off. I suppose on the picking of the cows themselves, very good to get outside advice, like from your vet, especially, or your advisor, just to give you a help on those cows picking. I suppose the first thing now, what people should be doing while cows are out full time, is the tail should be clipped. Some people will be flaming the others. This is ideal time for flaming the others to give it. It's a practice that's very, very little practice at farm level. Group sizes, in my opinion, it should be no greater than six or 10. And I'm not saying that you don't only do six or 10 in a day. I think I'm saying you put six or 10 on the rotary or in the herringbone. You do them out the gate, clean the decks, reset the clock and put another six or 10. You can do 60 or 100 if you want to. The best system I've seen from the point of view of hygiene is a four person job. One person is cleaning, one person is disinfecting, one person is administering and the other person is delivering the tubes to the, to the person that's administering. Coming up to the drying off, I suppose we should be prepping the cows and winding them down nutritionally coming into the drying off. And just to clarify, I suppose, if you got veterinary help to make sure that your delivery of your procedure is right and get the team consistent, that is a big thing as well. Ideally, post drying off, if the cows had a, could go outside, that's the ideal scenario. That's very much weather dependent. So it's on a cubicle bed, cubicle per cow, scrapers ran eight times a day, disinfectant lime on the cubicles done twice a day, and monitoring. You're monitoring them twice a day. That's the crucial aspect of it. It depends on the cow. The cow that's um, in calf, and there'll be some cows will naturally wind themselves down. You know, Any cow that's on 10, 11 litres, there'll be little risk of them after, say, four or five days after drying off. Then you will have certain cows that are low litre low liter output, but they're brittle cows. From an antibiotic point of view, and the antibiotic cows, the risk there, what you're looking at is, first of all, are they secure in the part of the host they're in that they can't get in with the milking group? So they're easily identified that if someone breaks out, that they won't potentially contaminate a cow. Ideally separate them, but the practicalities, that probably can't happen in a lot of farms. Hygiene for target for that first two to three weeks after drying off is crucial. If you could put the effort in there, you get a fantastic bounce of it. That's cleaning twice a day, liming twice a day, using disinfectant limes maybe, if you can. If there's lacking cubicles, who's going to suffer? The young, the young and the weak. So they will suffer from that and you've got to prioritise cubicle housing for those. They're very vulnerable. Culture and sensitivity is crucial. You need to know your enemy when you're dealing with this. An accurate sample is crucial. Like a bad sample is actually worse than no sample because it leads you down the wrong direction. Get your vet in to take the sample and you can build up then a picture of what's happening in the herd. When I'm drawing off my cows and I have my batch of six or 10 cows, I've applied my antibiotics. I've worked my protocol, front left, front right, back right, back left. I followed the same protocol with my sealer and then I'm teat spraying, ideally teat dipping with the barrier dip post drying off is, is a great thing to help. Um, number one, you're ensuring good coverage. It will last that bit longer. Um, you can see that it's covered because usually there's a, a nice dye in some of these type of products. When you're post drying off, it is a good system that they could stand for an hour post drying off. Access to food and water, but not in a position to lie down, just to let the sealer seal, let the t sphincter close down, and just give them a chance before they go lying up in the cubicles. 
The biggest thing with the first calvers is they're my future potential. You know, so hopefully that as a bunch, 90, 95% of them are going to be sell, low cell count errors. They can be quite agitated, some heifers when you're dealing with them. So time and hygiene with first calvers and doing them as a bunch on their own is a help. It's a good sign that you've stopped the spread within the herd itself, which is, it's, it's a good sign. So we want to protect them now for next year. I definitely get advice from my vet to see what level of soil we're at. Some people, depending on the level of infection, will probably, will be recommended to use an antibiotic and a sealer on those. Other people will probably recommend it to reduce the bar to, that the heifer should average under 50,000 for the year, with no count over 100,000. Just to make sure I'm guarding those first calvers until I get my herd infection rate low. But this, this is a crucial point where you need direction from a professional like your vet to, to make sure that you're on the right track. The milking machine needs to be tested at least once a year, and ideally twice a year. But look, if we could get it done once a year, we would change the liner every six months or every 2,000 milkings, whichever comes first. One thing I would say to farmers is, as they're drying off their cows, they should keep a close eye on the teat score of the cows. It's probably the only time in the year where you look at every teat of every cow at drying off. And that's a very good indication to see how your parlor is working and how your milking procedure is working. If there's a lot of teat end damage in those cows at drying off, you have a problem with your milking technique or you have a problem with the settings in your milking parlor. And that's something that will heal over the dry period, but it needs to be dealt with before the subsequent spring.